This is our first video on capacitors and uh, circuits that will have capacitors in them. Uh, we did the resistor circuits in AP Physics 1 at the end of AP Physics 1, and for AP Physics 2, they introduced capacitor circuits. So before we start the capacitors and what they mean, I want to introduce to you um, Gauss's law in distribution of the charge on uh, different surfaces. So before um, there's one concept that I have to talk about, it's called the electric flux, and we're going to be talking about the flux also when we start magnetic field. So um, the electric flux, and here you see like the letter F. So this letter F represents flux, and it is the distribution of charge on the enclosed area divided by permittivity of that um, uh, medium that where the charge is located. And another formula commonly used is um, electric field times the area times the cosine of the angle and when they say cosine of an angle so here is the normal so here i'm writing the normal line perpendicular to the surface and um, if your electric field maybe i'll choose the green one for electric field so if your electric field is in the direction as is shown then um, th cosine of theta so the theta is between the normal to the surface through which electric field passing and the electric field itself so it's always going to be an angle between the normal and so i'm drawing in this picture so it's between the normal and the electric field and the normal is always to the surface through which electric field is passing and when the word says normal, that means it's perpendicular to the surface. You don't need to know this formula for AP Physics 2. They don't use it. Uh, they use uh, flux for magnetic field, but it is important just to understand what flux is. So the flux is the amount of electric field lines passing through the area times the cosine of an angle between the normal to the surface through which electric field lines are passing and the direction of the electric field itself. So when we talk about the charges, we need to understand that conductors contain free charges that move easily. When excess, excess charge is placed in a conductor, um, on the conductor is, in the conductor is put into a static electric field, the charges in the conductor quickly respond to reach a steady state called electrostatic equilibrium. And when the, um, an object in static equilibrium, the, there are some properties that you um, need to understand how the charge is distributed. And the charge electric, electric field um, in the conductor, when it has a charge uh, on the surface, uh, so electric field inside of the conductor is considered to be zero. So all the charges are on the surface. And just outside a conductor, the electric field lines are perpendicular to its surface, ending or beginning on charges on the surface. So if it's a positive charge, then the uh, electric field lines are going to be going away from the surface. And if the, um, the conductor has, a negatively, has been a negatively charged, then the electric field lines are going to be uh, coming toward the negatively charged surface but the electric field lines are going to be always perpendicular to the surface and any excess charge resides uh, entirely on the surface or um, surfaces of a conductor so all the charge is distributed outside of the conductor there is no charge inside of the conductor and there is no uh, electric field uh, inside of the conductor electric field inside of the conductor is zero so this would be true for um, the uniform conductor, but if the conductor is not uniform, like the second picture um, in the uh, in the conductors in electrostatic equilibrium, so this picture, so if the conductor is not a uniform and doesn't have a uniform shape, the excess charge on a non-uniform conductor becomes most concentrated at the location of greatest curvature. So you see where uh, it's the sharpest curvature, there's going to be more uh, charge distributed there than where it is um, 
like more flatter surface and another the last um law that we're going to look at is the movement of the charges so it's considered that um, only negative charges are moving in the con in the conductors uh, the positive charges stay with uh, the atom and the negative charge the electrons will be moving um, to uh, to pass the current through the conductor because on a very sharpie um, curved surfaces the charges concentrate the most uh, this principle is used for the lightning rods that work the best um, because they have the pointy areas and that the charge will be concentrating um, in one pointy area and um, that saves like when the uh, lightning happens and another device that makes use of some of these principles is Faraday's cage and um, so the Faraday's cage is um, a shield area that um, has like the net or um, you can see the picture the dark picture the person is uh, standing inside of the cage and uh, all electrical charges will be reside on the outside surface of that shield or of that cage and there will be no electrical field inside of that cage so the person can be uh, safely hiding inside of that cage and not be harmed when high voltage charges uh, hit the cage further cage is used in um, electrical f uh, to stray the electrical fields in the environment from interfering with sensitive uh, measurements like uh, electrical signals and devices like cell phones and um, during electrical storms if you are driving a car it is best to stay inside of your car because it has the metal cage where you're hiding so it's not the tires that will protect you from the lightning it's the car because you are inside of the metal cage um, and the charge inside of the cage is going to be zero so you're not going to be struck um, by electrical charge from the lightning so another interesting fact is the electric uh, field inside of the uh, cage is going to stay zero so you see here on the graph that electric field is outside the farther away you go the last electric field is going to be left and again the closest to the surface they have the, the most electric field and then it drops to zero on both sides and then electric field inside of the charge is uh, inside of the conductor is zero there are way, different ways to charge uh, objects so you can charge by friction so if you have a glass and um, asbestos or you can have silk and glass different materials will charge um, distribute the charge differently so you see if the glass and uh, asbestos are in contact with friction then asbestos is going to be charged positively but the glass is going to be charged negatively but if you have glass and silk then the glass is going to be charged positively and the silk is going to be charged negatively if you rub one against another so there is different table uh, where you can see which material rubbed against which gives you a positive and negative charge you don't have to remember it you just have to know that this is one of the ways to charge the materials another way to charge the materials is by a contact and electrification by contact occurs when two objects come in contact so that charges can move from one object to another and uh, when the objects are evenly distributed then the objects are going to be in equilibrium and i think we looked in the previous uh, videos how the charges are distributed when they are in contact so one of the other ways of charging uh, two objects is by contact one had to be charged so they both distribute the charge between two of them and then you can also charge by induction and charging by induction is a method used to charge an object without actually touching an object or any other uh, charged objects induction is the process of electric field acting on the another without the contact and uh, you can bring the charged object to another object and um, that is not charged and you will see the charges um, of sa same charges will move away and the opposite charge will stay so this way you have 
part of the chart, part of the object charged um, positively and charged part of the object charged negatively. And another one is discharge. And um, in this way, uh, you have two objects are not in contact, but one of them is a uh, charge that has a lot of uh, excess of a charge and it will break through an insulator through the air and discharge on the other object. And um, example would be like lightning. So the capacitor is a device used in variety of electric circuits, for example, um, to tune the frequency of the radio, to illuminate, sparking, um, when you turn on or off the device, uh, so, or when the, um, the device loses its power for a short amount of time, and if there is a capacitor, the capacitor discharges and keeps the current floating. So you, um, the capacitors will consist of two plates, and in between there is a dielectric, uh, non-conducting uh, material. And sometimes it's a vacuum, and sometimes it's the different uh, dielectric uh, that, um, with that different dielectric, you can actually have higher capacitance of the capacitor. And the capacitance of the capacitor is going to have the letter C. So you see right here, the capacitance of the conductor is going to have the letter C. And the capacitance states um, the ratio of the charge per area. So the, um, the formula, the one that is on the right, tells you that um, the capacitance will depend on the area of the capacitor, the distance between the plates, and the epsilon sub-zero, um, that is the vacuum permittivity of the free space and that uh, the epsilon sub zero changes if you have a dielectric other than vacuum so that number will change and another definition of the capacitor is how much charge the plates will um, collect on each plate how much charge you will have depending on how much voltage you apply so the voltage is the potential difference when you think about the voltage i want you to think about uh, the lake so you don't have a current in the lake because uh, the lake is flat. In order to for the lake to have a current, you would have to raise one side of the lake. It will give it higher potential. And then the, the lake is gonna be floating from one from higher potential to the other side, to the lower potential. So when you apply the potential difference, I'm just reviewing with you what we learned in AP Physics 1, when you apply the potential difference, which is voltage, then the charges will accumulate on different plates. So the one that is connected to the negative charge will have access of the negative charge, and the one that is connected to the positive charge will have access of the positive charge. And um, so the capacitance uh, is going to be equal to charge per voltage applied, the one on the left formula in the red box, or it's going to be equal to um, the epsilon sub zero, which is permittivity of the uh, um, the dielectric or vacuum, and area per distance, area of the uh, plate. So if I have some area of the plate, and D is the distance between those plates, and this is the area of the plate. And then there is a K appearing in between in this formula as well. So I don't see the formula K um, on the right formula in the bottom box. But I do see K appearing over there um, in the big uh, top box of the formula. So that K is uh, permeability of the material between the plates. So if the dielectric is different, so if you do fill it in, so this would be the vacuum. But if um, it's filled in not with a vacuum, but a different dielectric, then K will increase the capacitance of the, uh, of the capacitor. And epsilon sub zero, the vacuum permittivity of the free space is equal to 8.810 to the negative 12 uh, Faraday, Farad over the meter, the definition. 
and also it has charge density it's how much um, so here I have another formula for you charge density so this is how much charge per area so if you have a here density that means how much charge per area so there's only two formulas that you actually need to know it's the formula of the uh, capacitance it's the charge per, vo per voltage applied and it is the um, epsilon sub zero or k times epsilon sub zero and then area per distance between the plates usually they have quite a few questions related to the capacitors on um, on your AP exam so let's look at some questions so you have the capacitance is going to be measured in farads so um, 3 pico farad so pico stands 10 to the negative 12 farad is connected to a 12 volt battery and what is the charge on the capacitor so I know that the capacitance is equal to the charge per voltage so you can use either of those formulas they ask you how much charge so the charge is equal to the capacitance times the voltage the capacitance they say is 3 pico so that's 3 10 to the negative of 12 and times uh, 12 so the charge is equal to 36 pico and the charge is measured in coulombs so capacitance is going to be measured in farads so capacitance is measured in farads and um, farads and charge is measured in coulombs for the next question i found it in um, our college book uh, problems uh, and in the textbook a parallel plate capacitor has the area is given and the plate uh, is separated by the distance of uh, one millimeter calculate the capacitance to charge on the positive plate if the capacitor is connected to a three volt battery and then the charge density of on the positive plate assuming that the density is uniform and then the magnitude of the electric field between the plates so if i'm calculating the capacitance the capacitance is equal to um, in this case i can say it's uh, the electric um, vacuum permittivity and then the area over the distance because that's what's given so i have 8.8 .8, 10 to the negative 12. the area is given 210 to the negative 4 and the distance is one millimeter which is 10 to the negative 3 meters so that will give me 17.6 and then I have 10 to the negative 13 and the capacitance is measured in ferrite. Then for the next question, they ask you to find the charge on the positive plate. So the charge again is gonna be equal to the capacitance times the voltage. So the capacitance is 1.7D, I can round it to uh, 76. 10 to the negative 12 and the voltage is 3 so that will give me 528 10 to the negative 12 coulombs or pico coulombs pico stands for the negative 12 the next one they ask you to find the density so the density um, it's like this symbol sigma and it equals to charge per area so the sigma say uh, this symbol means sigma and charge per area i have 528 10 to the negative 12 divide by the area which is uh, one 210 to the negative 4 so 210 to the negative 4 and that will give me um, 2.64 10 to the negative 8 and that is coulombs per meter squared the density 
And for the last part, they ask you to ma find the magnitude of the electric field between the plates. And if you remember the formula for um, the voltage, it is the work done on the charge. And that is equal to force times the distance divided by um, the charge. And the force divided by the charge divided by the charge is electric field times the distance. So here I have the potential difference between the plates. I'm looking for electric field and I know the distance. So I can say that the electric field is equal to the change uh, the potential difference between the plates over the distance between the plates. And that is three volts. And the distance between the plate is uh, 10 to the negative three because it is uh, one millimeter and that will give you 3000 newtons per coulomb the electric field this question i found in one of the study guides for ap physics um, and it says that 10 nano farad so i have the capacitance because it's measured in farads and 10 nano nano stands for negative nine ferrite parallel plate capacitor holds a charge of magnitude so they give you the charge uh, 50 micro micro stands for negative six coulombs on each plate what is the potential difference between the plates so i know that the capacitance is equal to charge per voltage or potential difference so the potential difference is equal to the charge per capacitance so that is 50 micro 10 to the negative 6 divided by uh, 10 nano 10 to the negative 9 so that will give me 5000 volt and the next question they ask you if the plates are separated by the distance of 0.2 millimeters what is the area on each plate so the capacitance again is equal to the epsilon sub zero the uh, vacuum permittivity and then i have the area per distance and they ask you what is the area so from here i can calculate the area is equal to um, distance times the capacitance divided by the permittivity so the distance is given 0.2 millimeters so i have 0.2 milli stands for the negative three the capacitance is given 10 nano ferrets so that's 10 10 to the negative nine and the permittivity is 8.8 .8 for the vacuum 10 to the negative 12. so the area is going to be equal to 0.23 meters squared so that was introduction of what the capacitors are and um, how to calculate the capacitance and the charge and the voltage is related between uh, all of them and then now in electric circuits you can have resistors as we learned in ap physics one and you can have capacitors so here you see the abbreviations for uh, different uh, different elements in the uh, circuit so you already know the battery so the longer one represents the uh, the positive charge and the shorter one negative charge the capacitors can be different so some they are the same length so they will have the same length so this is ceramic capacitor the one that has uh, the same length and the electrolytic capacitor um, will have like this so it's still a capacitor and you will have the letter c standing next to it for the capacitance um, then you have the resistors we already know uh, the definition or the uh, how they look in the circuits and the light bulbs and uh, so here in uh, on the right picture i have the potential difference i have the light bulb i have the resistor and i have another light bulb we spoke about this a little bit in our AP Physics uh, 1 and here I just want to remind you one more time that the electric current is the flow of electrons through the conductor. The size of the uh, current I is proportional to the rate of the electron flow. So in the formula, I'm talking about the first formula 
you see that the current is equal to the charge flow per time. So in the picture, you see an area and um, when they say charge flow, they don't mean negatively charged particles floating or positively charged particles are floating. It's just the amount of charge per, uh, per time in, in time. So again, it's uh, just the, it can be positive, negative, both positive and negative, only positive, only negative charges, but it's the amount of charge per, uh, per time that is floating. So that is the current. So the more charge per time is passing the point, uh, the stronger the current is. Then electric current density, uh, this one is represented by the letter J. And it is the, how much current is passing through area. So that is another way, it's almost like a flux of a charge uh, per area flow. Um, so that would be electric uh, current density. So here are a few problems. Uh, they want you to ask uh, to find the uh, amount of charge that passes through uh, the filament of a certain light bulb in two seconds. So if you're looking for the current, the current is how much charge passing in uh, a second. So that will give me 1.67 in two seconds, which gives me 0.835. Uh, is the current or 835 milliamps and the number of electrons that pass through the filament in five seconds so I can find how much charge passing in one second so uh, in one second I have 167 uh, divided by two uh, coulombs in one second so per time per second in five seconds is going to be five times as much so that will give me 4.175 coulombs in a second passing in um, or passing in five seconds and because one coulomb is equal to or consists of 6.24 10 to the 18 electrons if i multiply 4.175 by uh, 624 I will get 26.052 um, 10 to the 18 10 to the 18 electrons in five seconds so electrons I'm reading it in um, per second but it's how many electrons in five seconds because we multiplied it by five Here's another interesting example, and it says that uh, consider the positive and negative charges moving uh, horizontally through uh, four regions in the figure shown. So there's four different examples. And rank the magnitudes of the currents in these four regions from highest to the lowest. So you see that um, there's going to be more charges passing in A uh, per area than it is. The next one is going to be uh, C and the next one is going to be D, B and the next one is going to be D. So if I rate them um, from highest to lowest, my answer is going to be B because the highest is A and then C and then B and then D. And you see that it depends on how much charge per second uh, through the area, but it does not depend whether it's just negative charge or the positive charge. When they say the definition of the current is how much charge, not what kind of charge. So um, that's another thing that to remember when you solve questions or when they ask you conceptual questions on AP exam. And that will be it for our video on introduction to the capacitors. And uh, so this was only what capacitors are and the basic formulas about the capacitance and um, what means charge per plate and how the charge is distributed. The next questions that we're going to be doing in the following videos are going to be related to the uh, connection of the capacitors in the circuit. And I will stop here. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.